Hey, it's Tara, and today I'm going to talk about Philip Wiley's The Disappearance. Uh, this book was published in 1951, so it is like six decades old. Uh, that being said, I think it still has a lot to talk about today. So the plot of this story is that one day, in the middle of the afternoon, um, two timelines split. And in one timeline, all of the men disappear from the world, leaving only the women. And in the other timeline, all of the women disappear, leaving only the men. And basically it follows a couple, Bill Gaunt and Paula Gaunt, in their respective um, timelines as the world basically falls apart. And the men's world is violent and aggressive and over-sexualized, and there's a lot of trouble with uh, homosexuality and things like that, uh, even though the day-to-day -day life doesn't really change all that much in the beginning because men are trained and it was an, uh, it's, it's a world that was created for men by men. So uh, the men have no problem keeping things running as far as uh, technology and government and things like that. Uh, whereas the women's society, they have a, a lot more social stability uh, and more relative peace, uh, but they are pushed back in time uh, as far as advancement goes, where they become a sort of hunter-gatherer society because they can't, even though there are some women who are trained to work um, technology and government and business and things like that, there are so few of them that they can't train enough women fast enough to make use of all of these things before they become useless, basically. So that's the plot. There's not really, like, you know, an adventure or a goal or anything like that. It's basic, It's mostly a thought experiment, what would happen in this case. And I think that Wiley uses this book as a vehicle to talk about gender equality and sexual disparity and, you know, homosexuality and things like that, as well as base nature. I'm going to start with the bad things about this book. Uh, first off is um, the views of homosexuality. It's very clear that the author did not have um, supportive feelings about homosexuality and that is clearly reflected in the novel in the ways that he refers to relationships and uh, crushes and basically he trivializes these relationships and, and insists that love cannot exist except between a man and a woman. Um, so that is definitely one negative aspect of the book. The other is the racial segregation in the book. I realized that at the time there was racial seg segregation, um, but I would think that when you, especially on the women's side, when you lose half of your society, you would stop drawing those distinctions between race and class and things like that. But it's still very clear that there is um, there are still societal lines drawn between you know classes and races and even though blacks in America are free at that time, they are still very much enslaved to society's expectations of them. They don't mix with the whites. They are treated as um, servants, basically, and it's very clear that they have a uh, feeling of inf inferiority themselves, the blacks have, um, as written by a white man. <laughs> they have that feeling of inferiority um, because it's been trained into them and the main characters are still very dismissive of of the uh, colored people in their in their society and in their care and things like that. So those are two quite big negative aspects of the book um, that I feel don't carry well to today. That being said, there is a lot talked about obviously gender stereotypes and repression and things like that. He makes a lot of points that we are still making today in that women are fully capable of anything, but because men were stronger, they continued to beat down women and form them, you know, shape them into what they wanted to the point where women are culturally unable to do things because they don't realize that they can. Uh, so that was one of the, the arguments that really got to me. The main character, male main character, Bill Gaunt, is a philosopher, and you will find a lot of philosophizing in this. Uh, he basically, Wiley basically treats this novel as a soapbox. He gets up and, and preaches on it uh, about religion, about gender, about equality, about um, violence, all kinds of things. Um, he has a lot to say about relationships and expectations there. And uh, 
it does make the book a bit of a dry read in some places. It's not a compelling book um, because of these things, but it. that being said, even the negative things in this book that he has, the way that they all play together really highlights a lot of arguments, both pro and con, and it provided a lot of food for thought. So if you're interested in any sort of gender studies reading, it's one of the first 1950s and 60s novels that I've read by a white uh, male author who actually hits the nail on the head about some of the gender equality issues without making it sound condescending. And that was something I really appreciated while I was reading it. So take it all with a grain of salt. There is definitely um, a lot of, there are definitely a lot of small bad things in this book. Um, but I think that that is also something that you can have a conversation with while you're reading. Like, you know, he has some really good points here, but what, you know, he ha obviously hasn't advanced in this area. And it works well to compare it to today. So if you're looking for a good classic science fiction novel about gender, uh, equality and gender stereotypes and um, commentary on that, then I would definitely recommend uh, The Disappearance by Philip Wiley. If you have read this, I would love to have a conversation with you about it. Um, I had never heard of this book before, and I just stumbled on it because I was reading Venus Plus Sex by Theodore Sturgeon, and uh, Sturgeon mentions the book three or four times in his own book, and I really enjoy Sturgeon, and I really enjoyed Venus Plus X, and I thought that if this is the inspiration for this book, then uh, I definitely have to read it, and I am so glad that I did. Uh, yeah, I like I said, I hadn't heard of it, so I'm not sure how many people have read it, but if you have, I would love to hear from you uh, about it, and if you do read it, please tell me about it. I would love to talk to you, and I guess that would be that, so until next time.